Welcome back to the morning show here on Arise News. Governors from the southwest geopolitical zone of Nigeria overcame partisan considerations to agree on setting up a unified local security arrangement codenamed Operation Amoteko in order to complement the efforts of the regular security agents in the region. But that effort may have been dealt a deathly blow by the federal government's outright rejection and outlawing of the outfit. For a look at the desirability or otherwise of local security outfits like Amoteko, which, by the way, have been operating in various forms in 23 out of the 36 states of the Federation. We have now been joined by Professor Kemi Rotimi of the Department of History of Afemi Awolawa University, a man with a wide experience in police and policing matters in Nigeria. Welcome to the program, sir. Good, Good morning. morning. So welcome to the program. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this Thank gift. You. Thank yes. you, sir. Yes, sir. Well, well, well. I already, yes. uh, Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> prof, you, good morning. Well, Tundra has already set the tone for the conversation. Yes. I mean, you are the expert on the history of the police in Nigeria. And you have this uh, extremely authoritative book and many other writings on the uh, subject. But what's your take on all this controversy over the Western Nigeria Security Network? Is the uh, Attorney General right to dismiss it as illegal? And are the leaders of the Southwest uh, not just the governors, but also key persons in the Southwest right to say that, look, uh, the Attorney General doesn't know what he's talking about, because the right to life itself is a constitutional right, and that the people of the Southwest have uh, every uh, justification to defend themselves and protect themselves and their people. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by saying I'm a bit intimidated being swamped by three Egba descendants. <laughs> um, uh, a fine gentleman and two lovely ladies, all of Egba origin. Is this one is no. from Ibadan. I'm from Ibadan. Lila, Lila, Lila is the granddaughter of late Brigadier Omoraji Johnson. Am I right? Yes, that is true. The, the origin so, of your grandfather well, is yes, Abba that's Kuta. True. You so, have a bad blood. Yes, so, that's true. Very, but I knew that. That's very, true. Very thick. Well, granddaughter of Femi Johnson. Very yes, thick. Yes. So, I know the ground on which I stand is solid rock. Hmm. Now, to business. Incidentally, still talking about the Egba, the first native authority police in Nigeria was formed in Abba Kuta, 1905. The first few pages of this book will tell you that. But this current controversy hack back to a similar one in 1961 when Paolo Wale, popularly called Jingo, was appointed, a retired MPF officer, was appointed Supreme General of the local government police in the Western region. It threw up this controversy about the local government police forces of the Western region being a regional force became a matter for the Federal House of Representatives, and then the canvassers for and against spoke. Incidentally, Antonio Nauru, and I was watch as Home Affairs Minister in the Western Region, uh, the local government police forces of the Western Region were provincialized, was there, and he spoke for it. Now, what's going on now is failure of politics. The, the value of a motekun is not in dispute by anybody. What is wrong is the politics of his setup. And what do I mean? Of the six governors that have set up a motekun, five are in the APC. Can you fire me? Current chairman of the NGF. If you are talking of the blue eyed boys of President Buhari, can they count among the first three? Because even as Minister of Solid Minerals, he was an official Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs. Now, and he was Malami's colleague in the cabinet. The governor of my state, Akira Dolu Sesan. What Malami has said about nobody co contacting him, is it true? How much of discussion beyond the zone took place before it was launched? Now, so nobody can come here. I can't come here now and be batting for what the governors might have neglected to do. And if you watched, since Malami 
dropped the note, or call it bombshell, if you like. Look at the reactions. You don't do that. The governors have no business speaking as individuals. Oh, this comes to us as a surprise. We will meet, and then we will respond. Then you take a constructive group decision on what you have done. Kerolu, as I just said, was just speaking at the Armed Forces Remembrance Day. That's a different occasion. I don't know why you, use, you don't use that to talk about the uh, Amoteku thing and why it has come to. That's not, that's not an appropriate occasion. The government of my state. So, Amoteku is desirable. Amoteku is doable. Is Amoteku regional? In a way, yes. People have talked. Hisba, all these other names. Is there any one of these other predecessors that have trans state or trans territorial? Coverage? The answer is no. This is the first. And let's be fair. The neighborhood watch that transformed to the Lagos State uh, uh, Neighborhood Security uh, Corps began way back 2000, before it got to where it is now. Has the federal government ever collided with Lagos State government on it? The answer is no. The transterritoriality of Amoteku, we definitely put some people's backs up. Let us, let us not debate it. What is the solution? The governors just have to go to Abuja, sit down with Malamim, the president, and whoever they should talk to, and straighten things out. I remember that on the day of the launch, I simply played the YouTube, I played the video on YouTube last night. The hunters were already complaining. At least I, I know enough Yoruba to get the gist of their complaint. Because we are not educated, they want to sideline us. This thing will not work if we are not in it. Is the OPC particularly excited about the way things have turned out? I'm not sure. Then, this Amotekun Abamrere thing. Is, do we have any document as we sit in this studio that you can say, oh, this is the document that I have on this Amotekun thing? I'm not saying it doesn't exist, but I don't. Do you have? Would, what would the governors have lost? If beyond the Don Commission, which I suspect probably has it in, if you keep it in the Don Commission's office in the bottom, I mean, we will migrate to the place to fish it out. What did the governors have lost? This day, Punch Nation Tribune, maybe six pages, you will have covered whatever they have there in terms of information for the public. So that now that the issues have come up, you even have something that you are pointing at. Then people have talked about legislation. Has there been any legislation? Femi Farah on another station yesterday was talking about uh, the House of Assembly may have to pass some law. In other words, they have not. Why, why, why haven't they? Why shouldn't they? So for me, much I do about nothing. It is matter political, not the legality of it. Well, let me know what he's talking about. Because in the Nigerian constitution, there shall be only one police named and styled the Nigeria police force. The road to amending our constitution to permit of a plurality of organizations that will carry that labor, it's a long one. And I've said on another uh, occasion, 2018, at the NTA 101, instead of this jamboree called Constitution Review, each time the assembly, National Assembly uh, convenes, we are talking of the United Assembly now, a committee has already been set up in the Senate and the House of Reps again, Constitutional review. And what are they going to do? Omnibus review of the Constitution. You don't do that. I've taught American history to my students for some time. All of the amendments go and check. There is a background history. Some issues have come or came up, were debated, eventually required tinkering with the original document. But we don't do that here. Usually, you have come into the assembly, you are broke, and then they gather the members as a chairman, as a vice chairman, then they will be going on Nigeria. And then, I mean, constitution review. This, this, this is the time we are gradually inching towards what they should be doing. That is, issues will come up that will generate controversy, there will be views canvas, some downright um, expletive and all that, like one old man two days back. Just abusing of the people. Which old man is that, sir? Which if I had the man, yo, I, I, I had you loud. Who was he abusing? Was he abusing? I had you loud. Was expressing <laughs> his viewpoint. I had you loud and clear. Where somebody wrote, sent you a text about, ah, this old man today is, uh, is an unusual one. Oh, no. the thing is, and you say, oh, the man, the title of his book, telling it as it is. I have the book now. 
uh, how much you're telling us it is. Ah, every mention of Buhari two days ago went with some negative remark. And Bolati Nubu, it was down. It was just a beautiful Bolati Nubu. I had him, so it's not as if somebody told me. So what are we talking about? Back to the summary. This is about politics. It is the politics of setting up Amoteku that I think has challenges. I'm not saying it's wrong. Challenges that could be stretching out. The prof, if I may just uh, play the devil's advocate, it is well, on record yes. that before the governors took this step, yes. they met in June with President uh, Muhammad Buhari, yes. and it is reported that uh, he didn't object to it. They met with the National Security Advisor in uh, July. Then it was in August that they first announced the plan to set up this Western Nigerian uh, security network. They've also had several uh, you know, meetings with the Inspector General of police. So where is the politics coming from? Is the failure of politics from the governors of the Southwest or the failure from the side of the, uh, of the federal government? Very good. Let me start with the IG. They can meet with the IG for 1,000 times. You must concede something. The police in most parts of the world don't fancy when you set up another organization that eats into what they consider the exclusive mandate. In the Nigerian context, I won't go far. The NRCDC was set up by President Obasanjo up to today. If, as the Yoruba say, uh, one poli two policemen meet uh, one uh, NRCDC man in what you call a Sekogbeji, you quickly slap a few sharp slaps. When I said NRCDC man was killed in Abuja in 2018 and 19, have we had the, the outcome since? They are naturally not that amused when you set up another organization. I knew when the FRC was to be absorbed into the police in the early years of the Obasanjo regime, before eventually it was allowed to stay. So naturally they are resentful. You, the peace court thing, you knew what that guy has gone through over this thing. So meeting the IG is one thing. Resolving issues that might have come up is another. Then you have raised a point that is now pointing to, I won't say freedom of information. Some of these meetings, when they are held, will probably need outcomes from the meetings. And that's what I'm saying about whatever document the governors might have used in setting up a motel could have been made more public rather than locking it in up in the office of Don so that we know what, issue, what had gone on. And that's what I'm saying, that instead of individual reactions, they could meet. By the time they are responding, give a comprehensive response that everybody will read about the steps they took before getting to where they got to on the, on the 9th of January. Thank you, sir. So your position is that the baby should not be thrown out with the bathwater. There's some procedural sort of, they need to be regularized. Some issues should be regularized. However, what gives you comfort, or seems to give you comfort, that it's a political and not a legal issue, is exactly what gives others anxiety. With a legal issue, there tends to be a resolution. With a political issue, once positions are taken for whatever reason, people can be quite intractable. So do you feel that the Attorney General can be swayed in any way at this point, now that he has made this pronouncement? The Attorney General is the appointee of Mr. President. And President Buhari is on record about his disinclination to have any other police force while he's Mr. President. So then, then... Wait, you have to be fair to him. He has, is at liberty to show the direction in which he wants to go but in this matter. But that's not what is in their manifesto, the Wait APC now. manifesto This does APC not say manifesto, that. as they say, you campaign in prose, eh? You go on yeah, in, you campaign uh, in poetry and you govern in prose. prose. <laughs> and you know what that means. Now, <laughs> what it means is that... Well, Prof, <laughs> let's take a short, yes. quick break. Yes. And then when we return, we'll come back to you. You're still watching The Morning Show here on Arise News. Welcome back to the Morning Show here on Arise News. We're still with Professor Kemi Rotimi of the Department of History of Bafemi Awolowo University, talking about police and policing matters in Nigeria, which is an expert. Sir, before the break, we were saying how politicians campaign in poetry and govern in prose. So that means a lot of these manifestos really aren't worth the paper they're printed on. 
So let's just park that reference to one side, disappointing as it is. So what happens now with the practical reality of the staggering crime rates in the southwest of Nigeria and elsewhere? What is the response that the governors should, should make? Should they all go to Abuja, like we saw the governor of Zamfara do, to shed tears and say he's overwhelmed, he can't, he doesn't know what to do? What should happen? What is wrong with going to Abuja to shed tears? It probably will fetch you a faster result. Because when you see an adult, none of the governors is less than 50, crying like that in the market square. You know that this is serious business. Now, but it is not emotionalism that will do the trick. I've said, and I'm back to President Buhari, his position on this matter is very clear. But I wonder you must concede to this particular president, unlike some other president. You know, he's not a man of many words. He has made his position clear. And the thing he anchored it on then. Incidentally, it resonated even after the launch of Amotekun, i.e., I remember what he said in the US. I'm the one giving this, loaning these governors money to pay existing workers. You want me to encourage them to create another layer, this time around carrying arms. And they, when they are not paid, they will be killing people. He said so. Amotekun was launched. The following day, there was a cry about 15,000 salary or 10,000. So people said, ah, it must be 15,000. That in other words, and then the dumb commission was like, ah, we have not even, it's as if we have not even got to that stage, but nobody will earn less than the minimum wage. What are we talking about? There are gaps in certain of our people. But Malami is the appointee of Mr. President. If Malami reflects the sentiments of his boss, you can't blame him for that. And the Olu Oli thing that I referred to in 1960, that controversy, eventually it was resolved. But it is matter political. Because when you have finished all of this verbiage, you know, we have gone to the television stations and we have blown all the grammar, you are still going to go to the table to talk. But I'm serious about this thing about failure of politics. I think I've shared something with Ruben. The risk lectures for 2019 BBC is on this issue of how law has trumped or, or, or overtaken politics in this matter of governance. And that's a retired Supreme Court judge in Britain making that point. I will encourage all of you to, please, if you can take the time to listen, print the transcript and read it. This is matter political. I mean, look, I have to be persuaded that due diligence was thoroughly done and then express approval was given. And don't forget, when you look at issues like this, the, the agitation, I don't want to use the word noise, for restructuring is most strident in southern Nigeria and most, most strident in West, in this part where you have set up our material. Prof, let me bring you up on that, then, Please, because do. restructuring is the basis of everything here. And I'd like to get your views, then, on what you, how you feel towards the idea of state policing or community policing, because this, as you called it, the first regional security network that we're seeing with Amotekun, is the start of what may become a ripple effect across the rest of the country. People feel insecure. People don't feel like their lives and property are protected. And if you feel that way at the end of the day, you're going to do what you have to do to protect yourself. And that's what we're seeing here. So what, do you, what is your view then on state policing and community policing? And do you see Amoteku as some sort of start of a trend for this, if I can say it that way? Okay. Before Abraham, Jesus was. This thing they call community policing, I've spoken about it in several places. There's no big deal about it. The police, the subject of this book, that was community policing par excellence. The NA police of the northern and western regions, that was community policing par excellence. And it was under that scheme, the man you're looking at here, this is the father of the incumbent Lamido of Adamawa, but this was when he was chief of Adamawa NA police. The way the NA police was organized in the Emirates of Northern Nigeria, that was community policing par excellence. Mm. Membership, leadership from within the communities. These days I talk about community. Community policing has been touted now, even by officers of the Nigeria police force. This is a donor agency driven program. And you know what donor agency programs do? The man giving you the money has written the report before giving you the money, the outcome. And then usually there is no good soil on which that program is going to grow. And in the case of community policing in Nigeria, every IG comes, hey, community policing. When the new fund dries up, the program dries up, another IG is appointed, 
and they have been appointed in a legion. Between 1999 and now, the Nigeria police has had countless numbers of heads. Nobody has been able to drive through any community policing program. Because on the average, they have lasted in office for about one and a half years or three years. Well, Prof, I like the way you are drawing our attention to history and giving historical facts. That should be expected because you are a professor of history. But later, I would like you to talk about the teaching of history in Nigeria, which is a major problem. But before we get to that point, something to be said <clears throat> with regard again to either Amotekun or other security office that people are setting up. Don't you think that part of the problem is the lack of confidence in the leadership or, or even the structure of the security um, outfits, the former ones in the country? Some Nigerians say, for example, that, look, they don't feel secure under a security network that is dominated by people from one part of the country. The chief of uh, this staff, the chief of that staff, the uh, IG of police, all of them from just one region. Then why don't we just set up our own, you know, led by our own people, so that we can be sure that, you know, we'll protect ourselves because we have the right to life. Don't you think that that's a problem? Yeah. Or you think it's okay for yeah. all the agencies to be led by people from one place, and the only one that is led by an outsider is just an administrative uh, head? It is not as problematic as you think it is. No big deal. If you have read my exchange of correspondence with Yinka Odumaki after I wrote his own Ami article, which if you have not read, I can forward to you again. There's no big deal. Let us stop being hyperactive or hypersensitive to these things. As I've said, between 1999 and 2010, the Nigeria police force was led by 5,000 Nigerians. Three of them in succession, Yoruba. Three, Yoruba, before Okiro and Onovo. Then it was after Onovo that you have had what you had now. For all of the Obasanjo years, all of the armed forces, there was no North, Northwestern or Northeastern person leading any one of them. So these things happen, and they will happen. Then the next thing you are going to say, which you have not said, uh, over, overstay, uh, time expiring. Lani Shaki is the chief of the first staff, like the service chiefs. He has also overstayed. These things will happen. That's not the problem. Lagos State set up his uh, uh, neighborhood watch. I knew about it because I passed it sem in a seminar at the Hall in 2000, 2001, when they were just starting. Now it has transformed to what it is now. And Mr. Ajao, the uh, head, is a retired DIG. Nobody has challenged Lagos about what the, the uh, as Noble Watch has been doing. And almost all of that, say you have given the number, 23 out of, nobody has complained about anything. This thing about this is people being appointed from one section of the country is neither here nor there. Northern Nigeria suffers from a problem, especially the Muslim part. Scarcity of names. Mohammed Mohammed, Adamu Mohammed, Mohammed Ibrahim, <laughs> Ibrahim Mohammed. That's different for Ruben Abati. That's the way we came wrote to me. Lila, uh, uh, Tudu, Abiola. Uh, do you know that one Ibrahim Mohammed could be from Milori and the other one from Abakuta? But once you see Ibrahim Mohammed, hey, what did you go down and consider? It's not always <laughs> the case. But even if it is, I did not enter to the post. Thank you, sir, because I tend to shy away from self victimization, yes. when, especially when it's completely misplaced. Yes. So thank you for that perspective there. However, I'm not being one of those tribalists or one of those hysterics, it must be said. Okay, you've raised the question here that this um, Amoteko is a regional operation. It, it, it runs beyond the borders of a particular state, that that might be what has caused some pause. In the, yes, but, okay, so that is unorthodox. Yes. But we also have something equally unorthodox, if I can use that word, Hizba. Enforcing Islamic law in a country like Nigeria, which is multi religious. The Attorney General never came to say that was unlawful. So it looks like a double standard. And the Isba is in more than one state. Yes. It's in Kaduna State, it's in Katsina, it's in other states. It looks, it looks a bit. It's in Kano. Yes, it's kind so of So isn't suspect. that also regional, yeah. cross border? Do you, do you have Isba, Northwest Isba, whatever? This one is. Western Nigeria, whatever, whatever. It is the, the nomenclature and everything. I am telling you this matter is political, and it will be resolved using that instrument. Isba is everywhere to enforce Islamic Sharia law about drinking and all that. I've had all kinds of comments about it. 
neighborhood security watches or all kinds of arrangements have been made in other states too. Nobody has been asked not to do what you can do within your territory. When it is extraterritorial, it could become problematic. The Southwestern governor should be grateful to Malami for one thing. He has pointed them in the direction of the rough edges in whatever they are attempting to do. That's the truth. So if they take emotionalism out and face the thing, sit down with him, what, is that, what do you say is the problem? It may be a useful way to even straighten things out. I've just told you now, the hunters in Ibadan played the uh, video complaining about a plan to sideline them because they are not educated and why it will not work. But Prof, we'll soon uh, close this conversation. Yes. I, I wanted to draw attention to the point I raised about the teaching of history yes. and the place of history yes. uh, in our democratic process. Yes. I mean, this is uh, the week of the 50th anniversary of the Civil War. Yes. Uh, but there will be many young Nigerians who have even never heard of the Civil War. Yes. History has been reinstated, yes. but where are we with that? We are, we are where we should be. Uh, that is, things can only get better, not worse. This morning, even in this short contribution, I, I normally don't like coming to any studio for less than one hour, but we'll manage the time. Now, uh, by the time I told you of your Egbo origins, Lila first started by querying me, but then we succeeded in letting her know that I knew what I was talking about. That's the value of history. Talked about Egbo, before the police being from Abelkuta, that is history. Talked about the crisis in 61, when something like this Amotekun controversy came up, that is history. The thing is being restored, but it will never have a large following. When you and I went to secondary school, People didn't subscribe to it on that massive scale because of the challenge with remembering names and dates. That's what push, that, those are due to push, push, push people away. But in terms of rescuing our collective soul, restoring it can be very useful. Well, Prof, Prof. unfortunately, we don't have the luxury of uh, one hour, yeah, I know. which you prefer. <laughs> I know. Uh, we'll have to uh, end it. Yeah. Yeah, thank we you, thank Prof. you very much thank for your. You.